All right, it's officially been about eight or so months that I have had my first recording console here in my home studio, and I wanted to share with you some of my favorite parts about having it, and I can assure you it's not what you think. I'll also share a couple things that I don't like about having a console that maybe you'll find useful. Let me know down in the comments. So there's two reasons why you would use a recording console or a mixing console, right? And it's kind of in the name there. You're either using them on the front end for tracking or you're getting it primarily to do some mixing. For me, I've always been a tracking guy. I came up at a tracking studio in LA making records in the room, going through consoles, two tape and two Pro Tools. And to me, that is my absolute favorite part about making records. So primarily the way that I'm using this console is not for mixing. First off, this is a Trident 68 console. So this is kind of a great entry level professional recording console. What that means is it's not $200,000, it's $18,000. And this is the 24 channel version of it. So I have 24 channels of inputs, mic pre's, and EQ's. There's also an aux section of the channel, so you have six aux sends that you can use however you want. There's a monitor section in here that's, if I'm being honest, quite useless for me. And then we have our direct outs or faders here, which I'm primarily using as direct outs. Since we're in Nashville, one of the primary ways people here use their studios is everything is always set up ready to go. Maybe you'll swap out a cab, maybe you'll swap out a snare or some cymbals, but the decisions have been made and it's ready to roll. So that's how I have my studio set up. Drums, guitars, synths, vocal mic, bass DI, always routed, ready to go. Now this is where my favorite part of this console comes in. All of my inputs are coming in starting on channel four. So channels four all the way to 24 are all of my microphones. So my microphones all hit the mic pre's up at the top. Some of them have EQs. The blues are where the EQs are engaged. And then they come down to my direct outs or the small faders, which send direct out to my audio interface. Now, all of these inputs on the console are tied to my Pro Tools template. All of these tracks have the inputs, the names, the levels already set and routed. So whenever we go to make a song, we pull up the template and all we have to do to start recording a session, unmute, guitar's ready to go. Bass, DI, unmute, ready to go. Drums, kick, snare, toms, overheads, mono, hi-hat, rooms, ready to go. Now the way that it's routed is it goes straight to my interface software, which is the symphony control. So the headphones are mixed. So if I just unmute it, I already have the perfect headphone mix. Just put headphones on and we're ready to go. So like I said in the beginning, you get the console either because it sounds great for recording or it sounds great for mixing. The mic pre's actually sound great. I'm using good mics on good instruments, placing them how I want for the recording. And again, unmute, we're ready to roll. I see comments often that'll say, why do you have all this stuff? You don't need it. There's no way you're ever gonna use it. You can ask Scott who's holding the camera here. All of this gear is literally in use. Literally every single thing here is plugged in, patched in, and in use. There's no something sitting around not being used. And the console is kind of the centerpiece that ties all of it together. I've got vocal chains here, the vocal mic hits, the EQP EQ going into the 1176 compressor. So the vocal chain right here, insert in. Same thing over here, I've got my mix bus insert. I like to track through analog gear. It's all inserted, it's all being used. Once it's in the computer, I'm generally happy with how it sounds and I don't need to do that much to it. So I will do the mixing in the box for the most part. With that being said, when I mix, I like to do top down, meaning I will use analog EQs and compressors on the mix bus. So even though I'm using plugins and I'm doing automation in the box, everything is hitting outboard compressor and EQ on the mix bus. So this is where the console solves that problem as well. Channels one and two, that's where my mix shows up. I could be using more breaking it out and doing more summing, but because my emphasis is on tracking, I'm using a bunch of those channels. Mix bus one and two, this is my second favorite part of this whole process. The mix left, right, insert. I push this in and all of a sudden, everything playing back in my DAW is hitting my bus comp, which is the warm audio SSL compressor into their Pultex. They sound fantastic. And this just lives. I don't even touch it. It sounds great. 
Occasionally, I'll, I'll grab the threshold knob on the compressor and tweak it just a little bit. But otherwise, that's my favorite part, is if I can track through analog gear and it sounds exactly how I want it, and then when I'm listening back, even from the start of the session, I keep that mix bus inserted, just like how it's always been when I work at a commercial studio. We're monitoring through the console with a mix bus on the chain, and it just glues everything together. Okay, now for the third favorite part of this. Now this is something that's a little more esoteric, and if you're familiar with consoles, you'll get it right away. It's the aux send. This is interesting because I'm not utilizing this on every track, obviously, because I'm using these as inputs. But let's say we're recording a vocalist. Sometimes a vocalist will want a track completely dry. Other times a singer might want to hear a little bit of an effect or reverb on their voice. I'm actually taking an aux send right here on aux send one, and this is sending back there to my AMS RMX 16. I'm using it on, I believe, small room is the setting, and it sounds so good. It's usually a luxury to be able to have when you're mixing. I'm literally using it as an aux send, going to the singer's headphones while they track their voice, so it just sounds like a finished record on the way in. The returns for that return to two separate channels on the audio interface. So if we're recording vocals, I can track the vocalists clean, even though they're hearing the effects unit. And then I can also print that effects unit on the way in while they track. And then if we change or comp the vocals, then we can just reprint it through. So that is another fantastic thing I'm able to do. I can literally just reach over, pull the aux down, turn it up, or just bypass it completely. All of these features are benefits. Now let's talk about the thing that I don't love about having a console. It's really big, first off. That's kind of a pro and a con. It's big and it's like right here and it takes up a bunch of space. Part of me is conflicted on this. I feel like sometimes I would love to just have this space be open, have my monitor here, have my controllers, meaning my SSL, UF8 and UF1 in front of me to be able to just do my mixing with faders here. Now, I could put my faders in front of this, but it's just too much. It's a little ridiculous. Right now, this is a nice workflow where I can do single fader automation with this off to the side, and I can almost separate the work I'm doing from tracking to being over here and working in the box and using my plugins and an automation right here. Keeps the screen nice and close. This does solve that problem, but I am conflicted on it. That's more of a workflow preference thing. This is gonna be more traditional in what you would see in a professional studio. So I'm used to it in that sense. So that's number one. It's big and it's clunky. Second thing, because of this kind of console, and a lot of consoles are like this, I can either put these channels in mic mode for recording or in line mode for returning to them and mixing on it. What I can't do is do both. And here is what I would love. This, this would solve the problem for me, actually. If this monitor section here could be used as direct outs. In other words, the microphone comes in here, I can EQ, and then this was my send to Pro Tools or to Logic. If this was my direct outs, that would totally solve the problem I have with this console. And then your faders could be returns. If you've used an SSL before, this is generally how the SSL workflow is. You'll have a small fader and then a large fader. And you can return to the console on the large fader. Because of how I like to work, I'm not gonna do analog big spread out mixes per songs. I like to work on a bunch of different songs and I'm not gonna recall and change my faders. It just doesn't make sense for a home studio workflow. I know you're probably laughing, be like, neither does a big console, but I, I do love working in the box once everything is tracked. That's like my main gripe, is if these could be direct outs and I could return to here, that would be a lot cooler, in theory. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Let me know what you would think down in the comments. There's also no automation in this console. Now, because I'm not doing, like I said, analog mixing, I wouldn't use it anyway. However, if it could be tied to the DAW that you were using, where my faders would reflect the faders in Pro Tools or in Logic or whatever you're using, then that would be a game changer. So those are the couple things that I love and don't love about using a console here in my home studio. If you're thinking about making some changes or upgrades to your studio setup or whatever setup you have, 
You can get everything you need at Sweetwater.com. I mentioned this earlier, but check out the AMS RMX16 Reverb Unit if you want to spice up your tracking or mixing sessions. I got mine a little over a year ago. It's a, it's a 500 series effects unit. It has all the classic reverbs and effects that we all know and love, including the non-lin verb two effect. Their small room sounds incredible. Don't forget to check the links down in the description if you want to see some of the gear that I have here in my studio. Big thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. And if you could pick out a console for your studio, let me know down in the comments, what would you pick and why and how would you use it? Tracking, mixing, hybrid. If you have any pro tips for me, leave them down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.